This is the Dreamers Podcast, where dreamers share their stories to inspire you. Now, join host Joe Pardo as he interviews a dreamer who's living their dreams. Podcast. I'm your host, Joe Pardo, and today I'm interviewing Megan Erber. Did I say that right? Yep, you said it right. <laughs> <laughs> Who is living her dream through jujitsu and being an entrepreneur. Welcome to the show, Megan. Thanks, Joey. So let's get started by giving a background about yourself. Well, um, I, gosh, where do I start? Uh, I was actually in the Navy for eight years. That's where I started out. Um, I learned a lot about working hard. I absolutely loved being in the Navy. Uh, the only reason I ended up getting out was because I had kids and it was really tough, really tough with the travel and being away for so long. Um, so when I got out, I went to college to uh, be a doctor or a scientist, actually. I was pre-med and I was in Texas and I, you know, I took one advertising class and I was like, this is kind of cool. This is kind of cool. So I, but I had to move home. I was going through a divorce and I needed help with the kids. So I, I moved home, I answered an ad on monster.com, started doing jiu-jitsu, and the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been in the like promotional products industry ever since. So, Well, thank you for serving, number <laughs> well, one. Thank you, yeah. <laughs> what would you say inspires you? You know what? Uh, my kids actually inspire me. I know that sounds cliche, but I love... I, the reason I started my own company um, was so I could be at home more with them, and you know, I think every decision I make is to make their lives better, and and it's, it's made my life better. Being around my kids and watching them grow up versus being on the road or being out to sea, it you know, quality of life takes a it's a big part of my life. It's 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 a big part of making my decisions is about quality of life. I left a hundred thousand dollar a year job to to start my own company, and knowing that there would be trials and tribulations and struggles, I, I'm being able to watch my family grow up and become a family versus being home Friday, Saturday, Sunday, then being on the road again. It's tough. I'm a mom and, you know, I love being around my children. So being able to work from home or work out of my home, and it, it's given me the opportunity. How old are your kids? 14 and 12. I'm sorry. I just aged my youngest daughter. She's 10. I, she looks like she's 12 because she's so tall. <laughs> <laughs> No problem. <laughs> I like totally. I actually. Well, I'm sorry. I have. Um, I have stepkids too. I actually have four stepkids, and there's a 12 year old in there. So I have two 10 year olds, two 14 year olds, a 12 year old, and a 19 year old. So there's a lot in there. There's a lot of kids. <laughs> right. <laughs> so how did your dreams come about? Like we'll start with jujitsu, and then you can work into sure. the marketing and yeah. go from there. Well, um, I was working from home, um, being a um, I was a promotional products distributor, and I, I started to put on some weight. And I've always been very athletic, um, very into sports, but I was working a lot. And I looked into getting a personal trainer, and the personal trainer just happened to do jiu-jitsu. And he, he kept saying, your body type is so good for jiu-jitsu. You're long, you're lean, you know, you're strong. Let's, let's do it. And I was, at first, I was kind of hesitant. I'm not a big fan of grappling with big sweaty men but I took to it because I was really good at it and I did a tournament like right off the bat and I, I placed third like not a big deal but I didn't even expect to win and then it was like a drug I was like I am addicted to this I love training I love that I could actually take down a full-grown man and and dominate him and I still can like there's YouTube videos of me of choking out some Penn State alumni linebacker and knocked him out cold so that's cool to me. <laughs> so that's how I got into it. Um, I had to take a break from it for about a year or two just because I was moving a lot for, for work at the time um, and then really got back into it about five years ago. Um, Full-fledged, wanted to go pro, was doing MMA and jiu-jitsu full-time and working, um, but because of travel, I was missing out a lot. I would just train when I would travel. So if I was in Chicago for a trip, I would find a school and train there. I'm in Dallas, school. Vegas, find a school. So... I did a lot of cross training, which just made me a better, better player. So being in jiu-jitsu, and there's not that many women in jiu-jitsu at all. Um, with that being said, there's not a lot of apparel or gear for women, at least something that would, I would want to wear. You know, you go out and you go to Dick's Sporting Goods and you just buy a rash guard and, or you'll order one off a website. They're all geared more for men. So with that being said, they're very boxy or they're, they're not fitted right, so they don't cover your hips. And that's, that's a big thing for women. Um, so I actually started my own fight gear line. Um, originally it was called 
Kimura fight gear, which I had some trademark issues, but it's now Dark Horse fight gear. And it's also kind of how I got started into starting my own promotional products company. I am selling branded apparel and gear, um, and that's kind of what I've been doing for the past 11 years, just with different swag, like little trinkets and stuff and t-shirts here and there. So I've kind of combined it all. Um, being in the promotional products industry for about 11 years, I thought it would fit. So it went from jiu-jitsu to fight gear line, combined it in with my experience in the promotional products industry, and now I, I basically run two companies. I have a fight gear line and my promotional products company. So that's how it started. Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> First off, what is a rash guard? Okay, oh yeah, well rash guard, I guess it's easy to compare it to what surfers wear. They kind of protect themselves from the cold uh, water or the reef. So it's very similar. A lot of jiu-jitsu competitors wear it's a rash guard. It's long-sleeved or short-sleeved, and it has a really cool, funky design on it. You support your team or your school, and it's, right now it's kind of like a battle of who has the coolest rash guard. So my 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu community, they have contests of who has the whatever school has the coolest rash guard, and there's some pretty cool ones out there. I'll have, to, I'll have to send you some pictures of them. They're really, really cool, actually. Yeah, I can post them in the in the show notes. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so how was your, your dreams received by your family? I guess first the jiu-jitsu and then later wanting to go on, out onto your own and have your own company. <laughs> well, no mother likes to see their children beating up other people. So my mother was like, I can't watch. I can't watch. Even though I'm like, but mom, I won. <laughs> she still won't watch any of my videos. She's scared to death. And I get that. I mean, I couldn't imagine my one of my children going and fighting and getting hurt by, you know, that's scary. That's really scary. So my, my mother and my, my dad kind of was like, well, that's what you want to do. But my kids think it's the coolest thing and all their friends think it's so cool. So I'm kind of like the cool mom who, who fights people. <laughs> <laughs> um, and as far as me starting my own company, they're all very supportive and very, very happy. I've actually partnered with my mom, um, with a promotional products company. So she's actually my business partner. So it's, uh, it's taken off very quickly and, a lot of, lot of support from my friends in the promotional product industry as well. So what steps did you take to get started with jiu-jitsu and then with, the, with the promotions product. company? Yeah. Well, with jiu-jitsu, I'm very competitive, and I think that's what um, brought a lot of it out in me. My, I had four brothers, and I felt like you're always competing for attention or food or love or whatever it might be. You come from a big family. You're, you're always competitive. So during these tournaments, I, like, I had to win, and I always felt like if I, don't, if I didn't win, it's because I didn't train hard enough. I won, I think, 19 in a row straight. And then I remember my first loss, I flew up to Boston for a fight. I didn't have anyone there to coach me, and I lost. I was so depressed. I was like, I'm the worst. I suck at jiu-jitsu. And then I went out to the Pan Am Games a week later, and I placed third. So I still lost a, like, a match. But it, it's hard. I don't, I don't lose well. I'm a poor loser. But, but losing actually taught me more. It taught me, okay, this is what you're lacking. This is what you need to work on. And I'm very dedicated to being the best. <laughs> and even if I'm not the best, I want to be the best. So I, I kind of use that in all aspects of life. I coach my kids' soccer team. I, I teach them skills so that they can learn it on their own. Or So I'm not screaming at them. Like I want them to be the best for themselves. Not for me, but for themselves. This is how I, I apply the same thing to my own company. You know, I don't want to do the same thing that everybody else is doing. I want to do it a little bit different. So I have fun promo videos. I have, you know, different ways of, of advertising and doing my own marketing and, and just fun things. People like fun. Um, and so I try to keep everything fun with the rash guards and the, and the fight gear line and the, everything. It's just keeping it fun, keeping it light. So were there any roadblocks with all of this? Um, yes, I actually had a huge roadblock last year with my fight gear line. I, I had the opportunity to sponsor a very well-known fighter for Bellator. It was the championship fight. Um, his name was Emmanuel Newton. He was fighting King Mo. He won the previous match with a spinning back fist, and it was like a rematch. So it, and it was going five rounds. I mean, this was my opportunity to actually make it big. You know, that, that ah moment, I finally made it. It was all over Twitter. It was insane, and I it was blowing up. And then there was another company out of Canada that had a very similar name as mine, and they just they came at me with every legal thing possible. And unfortunately, I had to uh, eighty six it, um, cease and desist it, and kind of put me in a like you know it made me sad for a little bit because I'd worked so hard to get to that moment where I'd finally made it. I finally was getting my name out there and sponsoring a huge fighter, and it was just kind of the rug was pulled out from underneath of me. So took a while I had to change the name and finally got there but 
I'm there now and it's it's better and I have a lot more products and a cooler logo and and my own company to back it up. So how about with jujitsu? A lot of injuries. Three years ago, I was um, working on a new move and I was sparring with a guy who was probably at about 50 or 60 pounds on me and freak accident. He just landed on my arm wrong and it snapped in half. That put me out um, for a couple months. And I'm not the kind of person that sits still. I tell you what, I was at the gym a week with my cast on and they had to change my cast out a couple times because it smelled so bad from the sweat. They actually took the cast off and put a brace on because they were like, you're disgusting. You need to shower. <laughs> um, I showered. I just couldn't shower my arm. Um, so that was a huge roadblock. Just the injuries have really... Injuries and age. Um, I'm 33 now, so I don't heal up as quickly. I had a really bad injury to my hip toward the labrum and was still working out on it for about eight months and come to find out I ended up having arthritis. And it's that's really put me back um, in my training So where I wanted to go pro at my age and with all my injuries that I've had, it's kind of been a huge roadblock. So as much as I would love to be the next Ronda Rousey, I'm not going to be. I'll be too old by the time I get there. So hoping one of my kids can take on that legacy. (laughs) (laughs) Well, how, how did you overcome the being, you know, sued part? Um, it was really, I just had to stop everything. I had to cease and desist everything. I kind of put it, put it aside. Um, and, and regroup. It, it took a while to just get that creative bug back to find a name that I loved. Tons of names out there that I liked. And, and I was like, oh, this could be it. And then someone else already had it. You know, come to find out there's a lot of fight gear lines. I was doing things differently. Uh, I think that's why I did so well. But um, I, again, I had to find one that I liked. And I, I, I saw something. Oh, it was the Katy Perry song. I'm like, Dark Horse. It's kind of like my vibe of jiu-jitsu. It's a little bit of this, it's a little bit of that, and I've taken a bunch of different styles to make it my own, and some of it's frowned upon um, because of Gracie jiu-jitsu being so um, gi-oriented, and I am a no-gi fighter, so it's kind of, you know, dark horse. It's kind of kind of fit, so that's why I thought it would be it'd be perfect for the name of my new fight gear line. How did you overcome the, the injuries in jiu-jitsu? Um, it, just, it just took time to heal up. Uh, when, I was, when I broke my arm, I was at the gym working on my legs. When I couldn't run anymore because of my hip, I was working on my upper body. You know, P90X in the basement. You know, if I couldn't do pull-ups, we're doing assisted pull-ups until my back gets stronger. So I can do, I'm up to five pull-ups. Like, that's really cool for a girl. <laughs> you know, it's just making myself stronger where I, if, if I'm injured on one part of my body, it's just making myself stronger in another part. So when I do get back to the mats... I'm not weaker. I'm actually stronger from my injury. Well, I know you mentioned wanting your jujitsu to be a full time mm-hmm. thing for you. Yeah. What other parts of your dreams have not quite worked out the way you wanted? <sighs> Man, I think when I was 17, I wanted to be a professional whitewater rafter. <laughs> that didn't work out. I joined the Navy and had kids. <laughs> no. Um. Honestly, that when I I get fixated on something, it's it's I I don't give up. I mean, I don't think I'll be the next Ronda Rousey, but it doesn't mean I can't go to Abu Dhabi trials. It doesn't mean that I can't just be somebody that, oh, that black belt, Megan Erber. Like, I want to make a name for myself, and I'm not ever going to give up on that dream, ever. So that's where I'm at with that. (laughs) So if you were stranded on a deserted island with your family, what are three things you couldn't live without? Man, we would probably kill each other. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, gosh. I don't know. I mean, like the. I mean, if you're gonna be, I'm. I'm kind of a um, an organizer. Like I would have to be organized. So if I knew I was gonna be deserted on the island, I would have water. I would have matches, and I would have sunblock. <laughs> you know, but not knowing, gosh, probably my cell phone because I like to play games on my cell phone a lot <laughs> and watch videos and jujitsu videos. So we would be really bored. It, gosh, if I was deserted on a desert island, I would have to make sure that I'd had something to do for my children because they would pro- we probably just kill each other. There, there were such active people that not being able to do something just gets to us. Ask me next time you have me on. I'll probably have a better answer for that, but uh, I don't know. I've never <laughs> well, that's only that one thing. Yeah. I mean, the, one thing. Hmm. The cell phone thing, a lot of people have said yeah. cell phone, so it's not, not an not, uncommon answer. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I, yeah, cell phone, because, ah, gosh, that is a, that's a hard question. So I'll have to go with cell phone. It's kind of generic, and I don't like to do generic, but I'll think about it. Maybe I'll have a better answer for you by the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> so you have any dreams for the future? Um, I would love to see my new, my promotional products company, my fight gear um, line take off. I would love to have a sponsor, a, a big fighter. That That's it for me right now. I, I really like to see it do well, be a top 40 distributor. Um, I recently did partner um, 
with a huge distributor. Um, I'm in a, the promotional products industry is a $20 billion industry. It's made up of small businesses, tons of small businesses. Um, I was approached once I started my company um, because of my reputation in the industry of promotional products. I was approached by Halo Branded Solutions and Geiger. And through a lot of research and a lot of a lot of decision making, I decided to partner with them. And they are over a $140 million company a year. Like they do a ton of revenue and they back me up. They are my backing. They, I literally am just able to go out and, and do what I do, market and sell. And they back me up. So it's nice. So I have a lot of big plans. I would like to be up there on my own in the next two years and, and break away from them and be right under them as, you know, follow in their footsteps. That's some big dreams. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have any last thoughts you'd like to share? Um, you know, if you, if anyone listening to the podcast obviously needs promotional products, definitely think of me. Um, if you want to come train, learn jujitsu, I'd love to have you at my gym. We have open mats all the time, I teach you a few things. I do women's self-defense uh, classes at trade shows as well. So if you have, even if you're a woman, you want to learn how to defend yourself. You know, jiu-jitsu is all about self-defense. The worst place you want to be at is on your back when you're attacked. And I could, that's the best place I want to be because that's where I'm strongest. So that's a different mentality to have as a woman. And I am very confident in my jiu-jitsu and my self-defense. So, you know, if you want to learn something, definitely come check out the gym, Next Gen MMA in West Effort. So love to love to pass that information along. So uh, before we go, any Twitter, Facebook websites you want to plug? Definitely, definitely. So on Twitter, um, because you so many letters in a in a handle, I'm Bryn Knows Promo. On Facebook, Facebook.com uh, forward slash Bryn Speaks Promo. Uh, we're on Pinterest as well. Definitely check us out. I'll have all those in the show notes. Awesome. Thanks, Joey. Thank you for coming on. Oh, thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Dreamers Podcast. Follow us on Twitter at Dreamers Podcast. Join us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Dreamers Podcast. If you or someone you know would like to be a guest on the Dreamers Podcast, please send an email to j at jpar.co. This podcast is copyright 2014 by jpar.co.